Hi guys, it is another dark, dreary day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we, Sancho Pons and I, have narrowly escaped being washed down the river in a flash flood up here in the Finger Lakes. But glad to be back with you here on this gloomy Monday morning. That would be July 12th, 2021. And, uh... It is your lucky day because you get two chronicles of the collapse. I was just over there talking, uh, posting a story from India. Believe it or not, some good news from India. But I have been sitting on this story uh, for a couple of days. This was the number one story on the planet on uh, Saturday. Uh, from the New York Times, the number one story on Yahoo News on Saturday. <clears throat> like in post-apocalyptic movies, heat wave killed marine wildlife en masse. <clears throat> <clears throat> so take it away, New York Times, <clears throat> and chronicle the collapse of a planet for us. <clears throat> I should have had a drink of water before starting this. Dead mussels and clams coated rocks in the Pacific Northwest, their shells gaping open as if they had been boiled. Sea stars were baked to death. Sockeye salmon swam sluggishly in an overheated Washington River, prompting wildlife officials to truck them to cooler areas. The combination of extraordinary heat and drought that hit the western U.S. and Canada over the past two weeks has killed hundreds of millions of marine animals and continues to threaten untold species in fresh water, according to a preliminary estimate in interviews with scientists. This is Christopher Harley, a marine biologist, at uh, the University of British Columbia, quote, it just feels like one of those post-apocalyptic movies. Yes. To calculate the death toll, Harley first looked at how many blue mussels live on a particular shoreline, how much of the area is good habitat for mussels, and what fraction of the mussels he observed had died. He estimated losses for the mussels alone, just one species, the blue mussel, in the hundreds of millions. Factoring in the other creatures that live in, in the mussel beds and on the shore, barnacles, hermit crabs, and other crustaceans, various worms, and sea cucumbers, puts the deaths at easily over one billion animals, he said. Uh, <clears throat> Such extreme weather conditions will become more frequent and intense, scientists say, as climate change, driven by humans burning fossil fuels, wreaks havoc on animals and humans alike. Hundreds of people died last week when the heat wave parked over the Pacific Northwest. Uh, a study by an international team of climate researchers found it would have been virtually impossible for such extremes to occur without global warming. Yes, just before the heat wave when Harley took the eye-popping weather forecast, he thought about how the tide would be at midday baking the exposed mussels, sea stars, and barnacles. Uh, when he walked to the beach last week, the smell of decay struck him immediately. The scientist in him was excited, he admitted, to see the real-life or real-death effect of something he had been studying for so long but his mood quickly changed when he got there. Yes, quoting uh, Professor Harley, the more I walked and the more I saw, the more sobering it all became. It just went on 
and on and on, close quote. <clears throat> the dead sea stars, you know, kind of a, a kind of starfish, usually the most eye-catching creatures in tidal pools hit him particularly hard, but the obvious mass victims were blue mussels, an ecologically important species that feeds sea stars and sea ducks and creates habitats for other animals. <clears throat> Scientists have only begun to consider the domino effects. One concern is whether ducks, which feast on mussels in the winter before migrating to their summer breeding grounds in the Arctic, will have enough food to survive their journey. Uh, yes, species that live in intertidal zones are more resilient, he noted, and the mussels on the shady north side of boulders seem to have survived, but if these extreme heat waves become too frequent, species will not have time to recover. While the heat wave over the Pacific Northwest has eased, punishing temperatures have persisted across much of the American West. Now another heat wave appears to be building, only worsening the ongoing drought. And you can look at all the wildfire videos to see what that means. That means biologists are watching river temperatures with alarm. Salmon make an extraordinary migration, often hundreds of miles from the inland rivers. Bob, I think we all know about that. A network of long-standing dams in western states already makes the journey perilous. Now, with climate change worsening heat waves and droughts, scientists say the conditions look grim for salmon without intense intervention which comes with its own risks. This is Don Chapman, a fisheries biologist uh, specializing in salmon and steelhead trout. Uh, he, this is uh, just his view of the Snake River in Washington. Quote, you know, this is two days ago in early July, Quote, we are already at critical temperatures three weeks before the most serious heating occurs. I think we are headed for disaster, close quote. Do you think so, brother? The plight of salmon illustrates a broader danger facing all kinds of species as climate change worsens. Many animals were already struggling to survive because of human activity degrading their habitats. Now throw in extreme heat and drought and their odds of survival diminish. Uh, then they talk about, uh, you know, scooping up the sand, the sluggish salmon, throwing them into the backs of trucks. Uh, you know, moving them to cooler water. You know, we've heard this before. Then they go from Washington to California uh, looking at Chinook salmon. Um, the critical problem this year is that the water is expected to grow too warm for the eggs and juveniles to survive. Uh, quote, we are looking at maybe 90% mortality, maybe even higher this year, Ambrose said. Uh, elsewhere in California, for the first time since the state built the Iron Gate Fish Hatchery on the Klamath River in 1962, state biologists will not release the young salmon they have nurtured back into the wild because, you know, they would die. If you release them into the wild, they're going to die. So they're just not going to make their run at all this year. Instead, they're spreading one million young salmon among other area hatcheries that could host them in all conditions. 
improve uh, wrapping up with marine biologist Professor Harley, quote, I want to find the positives, and there are some, but it is pretty overwhelming right now because if we become too depressed or too overwhelmed, we won't keep trying, and we need to keep trying, close quote, and I don't have to give my uh, own realistic spin. You know, guys, just get used to reading more and more and more of this stuff. Uh, keep on trying, and uh, I will keep on chronicling these uh, apocalyptimists, but, you know, it's taking a toll. More and more of these scientists are admitting it's game over. It's game over for the salmon. It's game over for all of these animals trying to live on hot rocks in the Pacific Northwest. It's game over for humans. Game over for a planet. But anyway, I need to wrap up this rant because I'm actually supposed to get my windshield changed today. Unbelievable. Getting my rear windshield changed that I knocked out with a tiller about six weeks ago. Wish me luck on that as the world burns. I'm off to change, well, I'm off to pay $135 to have someone change a windshield for me. Bye guys. Yes, little dog, did you survive two Chronicles of the Collapse in one day?